All right. Praise God. Hey, I'm glad you took a minute and stopped by to see me. Um, and I'm sure the title has might have upset you a little bit. And, and so right out of the gate, I just want to say that, you know, what we're going to talk about today is, is nothing more than just fluff. Um, it does not, you know, your salvation does not hinge on none of this. And to be honest with you, there are really good believers on both sides of the fence on this topic. <clears throat> so don't feel like that you have to, you know, if you don't agree with me, then you're some kind of heretic. <laughs> you know, that is not the case at all. So uh, let's get right into it. So when I was born or when I was growing up, I, I was taught that somewhere in the past, Lucifer fell and then uh, the earth was created and, uh, and then the earth was without form, it was void. Um, and it was in this hot, just uh, in between state, you know, of creation. And, and then we see in verse three, and God said, let there be light. And when he said that, boom, there was stars and um, there was light throughout the cosmos. And the next six days in Genesis are detailed as how, as to how God uh, finished the creation process. And then on the seventh day, um, he, or, and then he created us. And then on the seventh day, he rested. So, you know, in a nutshell, that's, that's pretty much what they, what they taught us. Or, and, or that's how, I, what I learned. And then, you know, you get older and you start seeing stuff and you start questioning, you know, really, is that right? You know, you see all these, these monolithic cities, you know, all over the world. And, um, you know, you, they teach you in school about Darwin, you know, um, and, and, you know, these caveman and, and stuff, these Neanderthals that they have the bones of, but. You know, they're not, we're not descendants from them, but where they come from, you know, how they fit in. So you start, you know, looking at this stuff. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to, this notion that Lucifer fell sometime before the earth was created, uh, I just want to prove that wrong right out of the gate. Uh, Job 38, 4, starting verse 4, God is letting Job know that, Hey, Job, I'm smarter than you are. <laughs> and he says, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare it if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest? And who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon all the foundations thereof are fastened. And who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning starts, saying together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So, Right there, the sons of God are angels. And it says, all the sons of God shouted for joy. So Lucifer could not have fallen prior to the earth being created um, and taken a third of the angels with him, or this, or this statement wouldn't be true. All the sons of God shouted for joy. So for all the sons to, of God to have shouted for joy, Lucifer had not fallen yet. So the next thing that I need to discuss is why is the earth without form and void in verse two? Because in verse in Isaiah 45, 18, we read, for thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth made it. And he has established it. He created it not in vain. He created it not without form and void. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. So how can that be? How is there, is this a contradiction, you know? Or is, did something happen to the earth? Okay, so in verse one, Genesis 1.1, God created the heavens and the earth, right? Verse two, 
and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So if the earth is void and without form, when Moses sees it, <clears throat> but God created it to be inhabited, and he created it in the time that he created it, it was perfect. So something happened before Moses sees it. Uh, when Moses sees it, God starts Moses all at, at the starting point of, hey, the earth is without form and void. But Isaiah says that when God first created it, it was absolutely perfect and there was nothing wrong with it at all and it was there to be inhabited. So what happened? What caused the earth to become void and without form? So I think, I think what we have to do is is there is there another verse is there another place in the bible that shows the earth um before it, it gets into this state of um being void and without form and i think there is if you look at jeremiah 4 starting with verse 23 And I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens had no light. So he's seeing the same thing that Moses saw, but he's seeing it in a very early stage. He's seeing it when it first happens. Because, and I beheld in the mountains, and lo, they tremble, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man. Remember that. There's no man on earth. And all the birds of heaven were fled. There's animals on the planet. And I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness. So there was animals, there was plants, there was fruit. And all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord. What? Oh, wait a minute. How can you have cities and not have any man? We're going, to, we're going to touch on that next. And by his fierce anger, because of God's fierce anger. So let's read that again. Verse 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 26 in Jeremiah. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger. So God was really mad, and God's the one that's causing the earth to be without form and void. At a time that there were, there were birds, there, were, there was um, vegetation, there was, you know, so there's animals, vegetation, there's cities, but there is no man. So how can you have no man and have cities? And I think... In my opinion, and this is where my opinion comes in, in my opinion, these are the Neanderthals, these are the uh, Cro-Magnum man, these are these humanoid things that we have their bones, we know they're super old, we know that, um, that we're not descendants of them, you know, our DNA is not the same, but we know they existed. Um, they had two arms, two legs, a head. They looked similar to us. Now their forehead was sloped. <laughs> their forehead was sloped. <laughs> That's funny. But, uh, but other than that, they looked a lot like us. So what if they weren't these cave-dwelling people that were just beating rocks up against each other, you know? And apparently they weren't because they made some cities that are beyond anything that we can create today. The, some, the stuff that they did and how they was able to put rocks so flatly together uh, where you can't even put a piece of paper between them. The, amazing. They're moving stuff that is so heavy, we would struggle today to move it. And yet, you know, when we're in school, they tell us that these guys were rubbing sticks together. I don't think that was the case at all. I think because when we start looking at who Lucifer is, when we start looking at what Lucifer was doing, 
at the beginning of the world, we're going to see, we're going to see there's, there's some, um, there's some connection here between Lucifer and these humanoid beings. All right. We're going to see that there were sanctuaries. We're going to see that Lucifer was trafficking, um, what was going on here at, on the earth to heaven. He was the conduit between earth and heaven at that time. He was the head. He was over everything. So let's look at Lucifer just real quick. Okay. So let's look at, um, Let's look at Ezekiel 28, 12, and it says, Thus saith the Lord, thou, and he's talking to, he's talking to Lucifer. He says, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Wow. Full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. And notice this, out of all the other creatures that are mentioned in, in the Bible, Lucifer gets more time in description than any other creation. God, Lucifer meant a lot to God. Lucifer was super special. And we're going to see how special here. Thou hast been in the Eden, in the Eden, the garden of God. That must, that, that must be a special place. Every precious stone was like covering the sardis. I, I know I'm going to butcher these. The sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the burrell the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. This guy is in charge. I have said it. I have set thee so. God's the one that put him in charge. He's over everybody. He's over everything. God put him there. He was, he was God's number one guy. And God made him the full sum of wisdom, perfect in beauty. This guy was special. He was special. Um, uh, thou was art the cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. Boy, that must be a pretty cool place too. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in you. He was perfect up until iniquity was found in him. So what happened? Verse 16, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the mist of thee with violence and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the mist of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast cor corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring thee forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall cover thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Wow. <laughs> God is mad. Oh, he's mad. Lucifer was the covering cherub. He was in charge. He was the conduit between earth and heaven. He had sanctuaries. The, these people, these these creatures, whatever they were, they weren't made in God's image, but they were humanoid looking. Were had sanctuaries. They had they they worshipped God, and Lucifer was trafficking this worship, this praise, this glory from earth to heaven. And he started keeping some of it for himself and he got caught up in it. And he was like, I'm going to be like God. And, and apparently he thought he really could because a whole third of all the other angels thought he could do it too. And they was like, yeah, you can be God. And Lucifer's like, yeah, I'm going to be like God. Oh man. This made God mad. His fierce anger 
his fierce anger. And we see in um, um, hold on. Look at Isaiah 24, 1. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turns it upside down and scattered abroad the inhabitants thereof. And if we go back to um, if we go back to Jeremiah uh, 4, 23, and we see the earth, and Jeremiah's getting this vision, he's like, and I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void in the heavens, uh, verse 23, and they had no light. Same thing, same thing that we saw in Isaiah 24, 1, where he made, made it waste, he turned it upside down, and he scattered abroad the inhabitants thereof. And now there's no light. I beheld mountains, and lo, they tremble, and all the hills move lightly. And I beheld, and lo, there was no man. And all the birds of heaven, but yet there's birds, yet there's wildlife, there's, but in verse 26, it says, and the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus saith the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet I will not make a full end. I won't make a full end of it. For this, the earth mourns and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it. I have purposed it and it and, and will not repent. Neither will I turn back from it. <laughs> God, because, because the angels, the rest of the angels, they're like, oh man, oh man, do you really have to do this to the earth? And God's mad. He's like, yeah, I'm doing it. And he turns the earth upside down. He seals up the heaven. But, but at the same time, in, in his love and in his, in, his, in his compassion, in verse 27, he says, I will not, yet will I not make a full end. So it was a promise that, you know, maybe some, sometime in the future, I will bring it back. And that's exactly what we see in Genesis 1-2. We see the earth. Now, we don't know how much time passed between verse 1 and verse 2. It could have been a, who knows, who knows. But we see the earth without form and void and darkness being upon the face of the deep. And in verse 3, we see, and God said, let there be light. And, you know, when we're growing up, we're, we're told that this word let is a word of creation. And it's not. The word let is a word of permission. God is saying, let there be light again. He sealed up the heavens. It has been black as night on the earth for who knows how long. And now God is giving permission for the light to hit and penetrate down to the earth once more. And then he spends the next six days bringing and allowing the earth to come back to life. All the things that he had created prior in verse 1, he's now letting this stuff come back. But this time, he's going to put man on earth. And he's going to give man, he's going to give man authority over all these things. What Lucifer once had, now man will have. And we know, we know what happens. We know we end up losing it back to Lucifer. But that's not, that's not the point. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. I also, in the future, I want to talk about the firmament, what that is. Um, I think it's real important to understand what that is. Um, so please don't be mad at me. Um, I'm not, I'm not, you know, these are just things that over the years, you know, that I've learned and um, I've embraced, you know. And I don't, I don't think just, and I don't think anyone's ignorant because they don't believe the way I believe, you know, that's not me. That's not who I am. Um, I think we're all, we're, none of us know, know everything, you know, a hundred percent. And we're all trying to learn and we're all trying to find our way to God. And, you know, we, that's what's so cool about us is that we can all see things in, in different ways and from different perspectives and from di different angles. 
you know, and that's what, <laughs> that's what makes all this so cool. So like I said, this is all fluff and, um, you know, just take a look at it, see what you think, you know, am I crazy? Am I, am I reading too much into this? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's really there. I don't think the word let is a word of creation. I think it's, it's a word of permission. God is giving permission for this stuff to come back. If God was creating something, it would say create, and that's not what it says. And then when, even when God uh, gets to the seventh day and he rests, what does he rest from? He rests from his work. He doesn't rest from creating. He, it took work to bring this stuff back. God, in his anger, boy, he, tur he turned this place inside out, <laughs> upside down. Oh, man, he was mad. So it took work to bring all this stuff back. I don't know. You think about it. And uh, I, just remember, you are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you. And I'll see you later. All right.